Hey, kids! Great to see you again. So glad that you are here. This is our last week on kindness, the fourth week. And man, I hope that these weeks have helped you to think about being kind to others. So just a real quick recap. So week one was that we are kind to others because God was kind to us. Okay, that's the why. That's why we are kind to other people because he was so kind to us through Jesus. Okay, so week two is that we can be kind to family and friends. We talked about Ruth, right? Okay, week three, last week. Do you guys remember what it was last week? I'll give you the first two weeks because they're harder to remember. What was last week? You guys probably don't even know that. That's from Jeopardy. Doesn't matter. All right, last week is that we are kinder, remember, we made up a word, we're kinder than we have to be. We talked about that in Matthew chapter 5 and and how Jesus talked about being kind, all right? So this is our last week, and our bottom line, bottom line uh, for this week, all right, is that we are kind to people who are different than us. Do you know anybody that's different than you? Maybe, uh, Someone you know out of the playground? Maybe someone at school? Maybe someone even here at church? Yeah, there's lots of people who are very different than us. And we should be kind to them, too. And so Jesus has, he tells this amazing parable in the book of Luke. It's about the good Samaritan. Maybe you've heard that. But we're going to talk about that parable today and how we should be kind to people who are not like us, okay? So, you were probably an old pro with your memory verse. We're going to try it one more time, all right? It's Colossians 3.12, and it says, you are God's chosen people. Uh Uh-oh. So, put on tender mercy and kindness, there's a word, kindness, as if it were your clothes. Be, don't be proud, but be gentle and patient. Colossians 3.12. Man, you guys, I know you guys got it nailed and you're doing it, all right? So take a second, pause this, go tell somebody the memory verse, all right? Go tell your mom or dad, all right? All right, we're going to jump into worship and then we're going to talk about being kind to people who are different than us and why that's important, all right? Great to see you guys again. Have a good week. Oh, 
like me, but you matter to me definitely. Definitely. It don't matter. Don't matter. Cause you matter. And I hope you came to cheer today because I am and always have been a super fan! <laughs> I'm telling you, the town I grew up in, we all rooted for the home team. We ate, drank, and slept orange. And whether we were there in the stands or watching from home, we cheered our hearts and our lungs out for our team. That's what's called kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. And if you're wearing orange like me, you can expect some first class treatment. But if you're wearing blue, <laughs> then that means you're a fan of that other team, our rivals. I can tell you what they're like. They're mean. They're cheaters. They eat broccoli. They're pretty scary. I've actually never met one in person, but that's what I've heard. I am not a fan. Not a fan. You know, if I saw someone on that blue team lying on the side of the road, you know what I'd do? I, I, I'm actually not sure what I would do. I'm not, I'm not sure. But today's Bible story will help us know what we should do. <sighs> Broccoli! <sighs> The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds of people followed. His popularity made the religious leaders kind of nervous, how he turned their expectations upside down. What is he up to anyway? So they began to look for ways to trip him up. One day, a law expert saw his chance to test Jesus. Teacher, <clears throat> What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus turned the question right back on the law expert. What is written in the law? How do you read it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the law expert wanted to discover the very least he could do to obey the law, so he got tricky. Ah, uh, yes, but really, who is my neighbor? Jesus looked directly at the law expert and he saw what was in his heart. So Jesus began a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, 
If Jesus were to tell this story today, it might go something like this. There's a man that we'll call uh, Ben who needed to travel from Jerusalem to Jericho. It was a lonely, rugged road, but he was well prepared. Got my water skin, got my quail jerky. Ah, uh, got my snake repellent. Uh, got my large number of clinking gold coins. <laughs> Stick them up. Uh-oh, forgot my mace. A band of robbers attacked Ben. They took everything, leaving him half dead by the side of the road. Help, please, help me. <sighs> there was no one to hear. The sun beat down. Shadows shifted as the day wore on. At last, he heard footsteps. Through shimmering heat, he could barely see a man in khakis and a blue button-down shirt. In the beginning. Uh, um, you know, let me Google the Greek word for beginning. That'll make me sound more intelligent. The man was a preacher working on his Sunday sermon. Help me. The preacher spotted Ben lying there in the dust, but he immediately looked down at his phone, pretending not to see. Instead, he crossed to the other side of the street, putting as much space between him and Ben as possible. Please. But the preacher was gone. Ben's throat was dry now. He could barely swallow. Finally, he saw someone else. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. A worship leader was now trekking down the road. He wore skinny jeans, uh, an unnecessary scarf, and uh, AirPods. Help, help me. Well, the worship leader definitely saw Ben, but he cranked up the volume on his AirPods and shimmied to the other side of the road as he passed. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, river, I'm gonna run away. As the man's voice faded away, Ben was left in despair. Shadows lengthened as evening approached. Once again, Ben heard someone coming. Turning his head, he could just barely make out a donkey. Perhaps he could tell from the way the person was dressed that this person wasn't a Jew. He was a Samaritan. Oh no. Jews and Samaritans were enemies. Even though the two groups were related, there was a history of bitter conflict between them. And the Samaritans worshiped God in a different way than the Jews did. Long story short, a Samaritan would have been the last person Ben would have wished to find him. What's that by the road? Instead of ignoring Ben though, the Samaritan man slowed down and got off his donkey. Oh no, who did this? The Samaritan quickly rummaged for supplies in his bag. Here, ha have some water. D d those are nasty gashes. I I've got oil and wine to clean them out. The Samaritan bandaged Ben's wounds and hefted him onto his own donkey. Steady, steady. Hey, wrap your arms around his neck, like this. By the time darkness fell, the Samaritan brought Ben to an inn where the injured man could recover. Thank you, thank you. In the morning, the Samaritan gave the innkeeper some money. Please take care of this man. I'll return and pay you back for any extra expenses. Goodbye. Thank you. When Jesus finished the story, no one said a word. He looked directly at the law expert. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? <sighs> the law expert fidgeted. To admit that the Samaritan had acted as a true neighbor was to say that everyone is a neighbor, no matter how different they may be. Well, I suppose it, in this case, one would have to say the man who had mercy on him. Go and do likewise. Jesus' story was clear. Love your neighbor as yourself isn't limited to just the people in your neighborhood. Your neighbor means anyone who needs you to show them God's love. So Jesus said to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And who is your neighbor? Well, it's the person who lives next door to you. Or in your apartment building. Or in your neighborhood. Or the town you grew up in. Or your country! 
or your planet. In short, your neighbor is everyone. That includes people who look different from you, people who believe different from you, people who have more money than you or less money than you, everyone. Jesus said we should go and be kind to all of those people. It kind of makes me think of the fans of that blue team. If I'm supposed to be kind to everyone, that includes them. <laughs> but how? How can I be kind to someone who's so, so different? Maybe I could try putting myself in their shoes. Whoa, well, that's a start. Hmm, what else can I do? Maybe I can find out more about the blue fans so I can see what we have in common. Like I'll bet they grew up rooting for their team just like I did. I'll bet they cheered their hearts and their lungs out. And I bet they ate, drank, and slept blue too. Maybe we're more alike than we think. Or maybe we're just different and that's okay. In fact, it's incredible to know that there are billions of people with all kinds of differences all over the world. So here's the one thing for us to remember today. Be kind to people who are different from you. Don't just think about what you'd want or need. Put yourself in their jerseys and think about what they'd want or need. It really is possible to be kind to everyone. You know, I hate to admit it, but I look good in this color. <laughs> and another thing, broccoli? <laughs> it's really not that bad.